Hey everyone and welcome back to Miss Azrael's Gaming. So today we're going to jump back into Little Guardsman. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. It looks like we're 42% complete. Uh, I don't remember what happened in the last game. Oh, I think we're getting ready to do a night shift. That's what it was. We had to, we got stuck doing a night shift. So we're on level five. Lil, rise and shine. Why, Dad? You rise, you shine. I'll take five more minutes. It's time to get up. Shouldn't you be down at the guard shed? And shouldn't I be heading down to cover for you? Do you want the good news or the bad news? Uh, let's see. Now, I know I did this the last time, so let's, let's ask for the good news we this time. We got the day off. Now you can finally have a day to just be a kid and do kid stuff and... Eat kid food. And throw rocks at things? The biggest rocks at the <laughs> biggest things. I think I heard some of your friends out back in the tavern doing just that. Oh boy, thanks dad. Wait, what's the bad news? <laughs> we only got the day off because we have to work the night shift. I'm going back to bed. <laughs> no, you're getting out of this house and taking some time to yourself today. Why do we have to work the night shift? Uh, good news or bad news? Okay, let's go with the good news this time. Apparently you didn't pick the right person's champion for the rescue mission. <laughs> whatever that means. And... Oh yeah, I forgot about that. For I picked the mage. That doesn't sound like good news. I have a feeling that none of them would have been able to do anything. Yeah, it's not. I guess it was just bad news this time. Who's punishing you? No one. I work the night shift a couple times a week to help us get by. Oh, Dad. I didn't know that. So, I guess you could say the economy is punishing me. <laughs> that and inflation. If taxes keep going up, I might have to get a third job so we can keep affording things like your little doohickey here. Wait, don't touch that! <laughs> Whoa. What just happened? Do you want the good news or the bad news? Both are. I don't know. Do you feel okay? I feel fine, sweetie. No need to look all blurry about it. Now you get out of here and enjoy your day off. But don't enjoy it too much. You have to work all night, remember? Okay, okay, I'm going. Just uh, try not to operate any heavy machinery until I get back. I should probably check in with Dr. B and make sure my dad isn't radioactive. <laughs> Okay, so now we are getting started in the game. So we already talked to Dad. We shouldn't have to talk to him again. Oh, yay, rats. I think it has a new rat ad. Oh, God. The rat problem is even worse than I thought. <laughs> we eat all of our meals here. She gags. Squeak. 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 People are sleeping upstairs. Better not. Squeak. <laughs> This hat, it is not as fantastic as my previous hat. My journey, it continues. <laughs> what if this guy's ever going to find his hat? Hey, our friends are not here. Oh, there they are. Simon, Lamont, how's it going, guys? Hey, if it isn't Little Miss, I haven't been around for a while. <laughs> Where you been all this time? Not around. I got what every kid fears they'll get one day. Chicken pox? <laughs> Worse than that, Simon. I got a job. What are you up to? Well, you just missed the rock-throwing portion of our morning. Sadly, <gasps> we chucked the last rock in the alley over the fence. Next, well... We were thinking of seeing if we could get our mitts on some of the cool stuff that Garby guys got over there. 
They look like magical toys, basically. Good idea, bad idea. Hmm. Let's go with bad. I have to use a bunch of those for my job. And even though they look like a barrel laughs, they're serious business. Come on, Lil. For some reason, the world is basically treating you like you're old. Work your magic and score us some sweet loot. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's a good idea, but I'll talk to Garbanzo <laughs> over there and see. I mean, technically, the way that things worked in the medieval times, you practically were an old person at this age. <laughs> Most of these criminals are part of a notorious hilltop gang bunch of dorks. Hi, Lil. Sorry, I'm not quite ready to open up the shop yet. I can't seem to find my inventory key. What are you doing up so early? Uh, isn't it just all sitting out? Exploring, shopping. Work in the graveyard shift tonight. So, I'm finally available to see some of my friends who have responsible parents and reasonable bedtimes. People like those small hooligans over there? <laughs> those aren't small hooligans. They're my friends. And I was actually coming to talk to you about letting us borrow a couple of items. I stand by my statement. And we can talk about loaning you some merchandise later. But first, I've lost the key to my inventory, and I think one of them might have stolen it. <laughs> Maybe you could talk to them for me. Work your little guardsman magic and see what you could do to get it back. On it. Great. One errand after another. All right, guys, time to confess. Which one of you took poor Garby's inventory key? It's probably Lamont. Was it me? I don't know. I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> so that's the way it's gonna be, is it? Listen, I need that key to upgrade tools and buy more power crystals. So one of you is gonna tell me <laughs> who's responsible. Are you a lawyer all of a sudden? <laughs> nope, but I'm a guardsman. I hope you got your story straight, because I really don't want to go down to the guard shed and get my metal detector. So tell me, which one of you took Garby's key? Between you and me, I saw Lamont poking his big, dumb, handsome nose that sits in the middle <laughs> of his gorgeous face all around that booth. It was probably him. Oh, he's such a bad boy. But also... <laughs> I don't need to hear anymore. <laughs> it was Simon. Mm. I've never brought this up to the group before, but I think Isla is a... Oh, God, they all accused back. each other. I always see her taking things out of Lamont's backpack when he's not looking. But also, I could make up my mind now or dig a little deeper. Let's question further. I know it wasn't me... I'm in a bit of a two-strike situation with my parents, and I'll be sent to the National Ballet School in Marvog if I get in trouble again. <laughs> but I'm telling you, Lamont got here first, and I saw him rooting around Garby's shop. I said it before, I'll say it again. I'm not saying nothing. It was Isla. <gasps> That's not what you said the first time. Okay, maybe Isla isn't a klepto, but she did go through his bag just before you got here. Maybe she's got a good reason to be going through his stuff. I got here third, so I didn't see anything. Okay, so Isla likes Lamont, so she could have been going through his stuff just to see what he had in there, because she's a little creeper. I think it was Lamont, but I'm not sure. So, did you figure out who took my key? Ugh, I don't know. I'd say not yet, but let's go with yes. I hate to be a narc, but I think it was. He got here first, according to her. And he got here last and saw her going through his bag. Let's go with Lamont. It was probably Lamont. He's the tough-looking kid with the missing tooth. Thanks, Lil. I'll be right back. Probably wrong. Hey, you! Mullet boy! <laughs> Stay right where you are! Garby isn't smart or strong or fast. By the time he reached Lil, Lil's hooligan friends, they'd run off. But Lil had been correct and startled. Lamont dropped the key as he fled. Oh, thank you. Ugh. 
got the key back. And those hooligans ran off. It's a win-win. Now my shop is ready to open. For helping me out, I'd like to offer you some gold to upgrade mm -hmm. one of your tools. Or load up on crystals. Whatever your little heart desires. All right. At least I was right. I only got 80 gold, though. I don't know the point of actually leveling these up further because we haven't really had a need to use one more than once except for maybe the x-ray I think I'm just gonna buy the crystals okay so I assume we go back this way mm-hmm Start. Okay, I don't want to start my shift yet. Let's go to the dig site because she wanted to talk to the, um, the professor. So the entrance to the dig site is closed, but there's a note. I have convened a meeting at the Mage's Guild. The dig site is closed for the day. Dr. Marquess Beatrix von Matterhorn. Well, that's just great. What am I supposed to do now? I guess I could go back in time to when she was here. Use the chromometer 3000. Yeah, let's go ahead and use it. I haven't used it yet. Shut it down, see what happens. This is actually gonna be the first time I've used it, so. Oh no, game over. <laughs> oh my God, you killed Lil, you. You encountered the first of many landmines in Lil Guardsman job. Your reckless use of the Chrometer 3000 triggered a catastrophic rift in space-time continuum. You died. That's a new one. Okay, let's retry. We're not going to use it. Well, that's just great. What am I supposed to do now? I guess I could go back in time to when she was here. Yeah, I better not. But Dr. B did say I could only use it at the guard shed. Maybe oh, yeah, I forgot friends? that. I better just get to my ship before this thing explodes. And how is our dad okay? Okay, let's check out the Coliseum real quick that we named for overpriced food. See if there's anything new here. Oh, there's some new. Oh, he's got a new hat already. <clears throat> oh, hello, dear. Are you here to watch the Goblin Ball game? Hiya, Mrs. A. I usually find Goblin Ball too boring to watch. Unless, of course, there's a little action on it, if you know what I mean. I most certainly do. I've got this month's pension check riding on a sure thing tip that's gonna pay out big time. Really? You sure seem confident, Mrs. A. Care to share that tip with this underage gambler? <laughs> Your father wouldn't be pleased with me, but I'll tell you what. Since I really bet the ranch on this next game, I don't have any gold left to buy my snacks. Would you be willing to help a little old lady buy a large hat made of nacho chips with melted cheese sauce on top? Mama just can't enjoy the game without one. Uh, I want one of those. Sure, th oh, I'm broke. I don't have the money. I don't think I should, Mrs. A. Heavily salted food at your age could contribute to what I'm guessing is an already existing heart condition. Why, you presumptuous little... <laughs> no matter. I'm sure Fredo will spot me for it. I'll be good for it after my bet comes through anyway. This hat... It is not as fantastic as my previous hat. My journey... It continues. <laughs> I'm starting to think he's never gonna find a hat. Step right up, one and all, and win some money on the Goblin Ball. Hello again, Fredo. Again? I've never seen you before in my life. <clears throat> but I placed a bet with you on the last game. Doesn't ring a bell. The Kaladar Lightning game against the Brawlers? I won some money. Okay, if you say so. Person I've never seen before. <laughs> Anyways, you want to make a bet on the game? Ugh. Nah. Suit yourself. I don't want to waste what little money I have. I can't leave without watching the game. Uh, seriously, I have to watch it? <sighs> Fine. Let's watch some Goblin Ball. 
What an embarrassing series of unfortunate accidents for the Milton Marauders. First, hometown hero Jorba Lepepstein barrel rolls out of the way and completely avoids the Marauders' lightning-fast offensive line. Next, the Sprawl's own dynamic duo, Edie and Audrey O'Goblin, shave all 14.7 seconds they need off their time in order to open the Diamond Snorf's cage. Incredible! We only see that every few years! <laughs> It all comes down to the final wagon wheel toss, and the coach has sent in Sir Warren of Bainbridge, the bad boy of the Brawler's midfield passive-aggressive line. He's muttering something to himself. He spits. He lifts the wheel above his head. He spins. He spins again. He spins a third time, and it's launched! <laughs> but what's that? The Marauder's weather wizard sends a fierce gale-force wind at the wagon wheel, and it's way off course. And it's coming this way! Oh god, I'm stuck in this booth and it's coming right for me! Oh god, tell my wife I love- <laughs> Hope I didn't get blown away, that'd be bad. Well, that was a particularly gruesome way for the Milton Marauders to win the game. You could have made some real money! Uh, come back next time for all your illegal gambling needs. Just ask for Fredo. Dang, man, I was thinking about the Marauders, but I didn't want to waste my 20 gold. Okay, so let's go over to Malcolm's. Why is his, uh, why is that available? Mmm, the goblins. Every castle needs a creepy dungeon, right? Ideal for prisoners who only have one arm. <laughs> Having not seen a bathroom, you become horrified at the realization of what this bucket is for. <laughs> Little knocks, but there's no response. Well, then why is it available? And I can't talk to the goblins either. Hmm. Okay, I guess we'll just start our shift then. Because there's nowhere else to go, so. Head down to the shed to work the night shift. All unvisited locations will become unavailable. Yes. Hmm. I wonder what kind of people come through at night. What's this? A mysterious present? Perhaps a secret admirer? Oh, don't open it. It's a bad idea. To whom it may concern, your choice of champion for the princess rescue mission was found unacceptable. Unfortunately, we haven't heard much from the mage yet, just a lot of squeaks and chirps from his tower. Uh, regardless, please find it enclosed a one-time bonus for your proficiency in character evaluation. Ta for now. P.S. My regrets on your nighttime work inconvenience. Councilwoman Ash. You received a free truth spray slot upgrade. Nice! That's pretty cool, and I didn't have to spend money. There's no writ for the night shift. However, there is a book labeled a Monster Manual Setting in front of Lil. Okay, the Sprawl Monster Manual First Edition. So, double gangers are shapeshifters. Uh, they're very rare. Uh, shape change, sneak attack, or their special attacks. Their weaknesses are susceptible to evils, uh, susceptible to physical damage. Alignment is chaotic evil. Size is small to medium humanoid. Does your loved one seem more adult than usual? Maybe they've been replaced by a doppelganger. These monstrous creatures have the ability to superficially assume the appearance of anyone. When dealing with a suspected shapeshifter, show them an item that they uh, an item they should recognize. When uh, where possible, show them their child. Show them Jimmy. Note, chemical compounds such as patent and truth spray have no effect on what are essentially gelatinous blobs. Uh, forest int itties, a a <laughs> int itties. <laughs> God, okay, frequency is rare. Uh, this I I know a certain someone who would uh, uh absolutely love this game. Uh, special attacks are stomp and or thwomp. Weaknesses is fire, woodcutters, axes, poorly administered town hall meetings. Augment is true neutral. Uh, size is climbable. So the story of the first transformation from mundane tree to sentient, a sentient mobile being is lost to history. These creatures are extremely dangerous, but genuinely motivated by threats to their territory. 
the bark of forest entity <laughs> entity <laughs> is often the site of cryptic magical runes and prophetic writings that can be deciphered. Well, that sounds like they wouldn't show up at the gate too often. Okay, goblins, a very common special attacks, none, weaknesses susceptible to physical injury. Alignment varied, size small. When the great expansion of the sprawl was undertaken by King Oswin I and then his son King Oswin II, the goblins participated as laborers and artisans in the city's construction. In recent times, various crimes and misfortunes have been widely attributed to this group, leading to their decreased presence in public life. Uh, whether or not they have actual uh, predisposition for crime and mayhem is hotly debated by the High Council and non hume right groups. Uh, herring, red, frequency is a 50-50. Special attacks cause confusion, create conflict where none should exist. Uh, weaknesses, careful consideration, alignment, chaotic, neutral, size, small fish to giant, and everything in between. Beware the red herring at Siren Call has many, uh, led many adventurers to follow the wrong path or to find enemies where none exist. Use your judgment and don't believe everything you hear or see. The temptation to believe a red herring is strong, but be vigilant and you will come out on top. Lycanthropes, a.k.a. werewolves. Uh, frequency is rare. Special attacks is bestial rage, claws and teeth. Weakness is silver of the rising sun. Alignment, chaotic evil. Size, post-transformed equals big AF. <laughs> Academics are split on whether this affliction is magical or uh, medical. The cursed or affliction, afflicted person suffers an attack or bite and, and come the first full moon, transforms into half-man, half-beast killing machine. In most cases, the individual remains blissfully unaware of the transformation, but in some cases, they know and desperately seek asylum to save their loved ones from the dark passengers. Okay, mole people. Frequency is common. Special attacks digging, biting when provoked. Weakness is daylight, non-fatal. Uh, alignment varied, often true neutral. Size small. So long ago, a subset of humans and elves carved out a life lived underground. This evolutionary branch began to change it to accommodate their new existence. They became smaller, relying more heavily on their sense of smell and hearing uh, than their soon underdeveloped eyesight. In addition, their hands and fingers became more claw-like because of the digging. While considered disfigured and even monstrous by some, police do not persecute the mole people. They are not to be punted. After all, while mole while mole person labor and digging know how, the sprawl would enjoy the world's greatest sewer system. Okay, necromancer. I have a feeling one of these will come through. Uh, they're rare. Special attacks are raised dead. Miscellaneous spells. Weaknesses. Their egos. Um, <laughs> alignment. Lawful evil. Size. All bodies are beach bodies. So, uh, magic practitioners who have broken their code and oaths and turned to the forbidden arts. Although not illegal, they should be discouraged from entering the sprawl. Note. The Mage's Guild would gladly welcome a fallen wizard who has seen the error of their ways back into the fold. However, not one has yet chosen to give up the dark arts once they've tasted that sweet, sweet necromancy. Okay, the last one is vampires. I'm sure we'll get one of those. Uh, they're common. Special attacks are changed into a bat. Hypnosis. Flight. Dental. Uh peculiarities. Weaknesses is sunlight, UV, garlic, counting bags of small grains, and wooden stakes. Counting s bags of small grains. Uh, that's not a weakness for a vampire. Isn't that a weakness for a, um, oh, I forget what they're called. It's like a sleeping hag or something. There's, it's, it's a certain name. I can't remember what it was, but it's supposedly like the reason like you wake up in paralysis and it feels like something's sitting on your chest. Um, and I know that, like, if you spill a bag of something, it has to count them no matter what. So that's kind of like how you're supposed to get away from them. But never heard that with vampires. Uh, alignment, usually evil, but best not to judge a book by its cover. Uh, size, human size. I mean, most vampires I've seen have been pretty hot dudes. So, uh, in century past, vampires were the stuff of myth and legends, sticking to the shadows and covering up their ghastly deeds in order to remain hidden from polite society. Recently, as a result of a powerful vampire rights movement led by goth rock icon Vlad Extreme, vampires have come out of the closet and may have become productive members of society. Yikes. So, that's going to be a lot. That's going to be a lot. Oh, got quite a few of uh, my gems, so that'll make it so I can start saving up my money, too. But 
will need that truth serum a lot. Okay, so everything's ready. And we even got extra gems. So let's start the night. Oh, that's a vampire. Good evening, child. I have not seen you at the post before. Yeah, you know how it goes. Drew the short straw this time. Burning it at both ends, you know. Just gotta keep on trucking through. I hear you. Working the graveyard shift myself. Yeah. You said it. Yeah, dude, you're a vampire. But let's talk to him again. What did you say your name was, sir? <sighs> Heinrich. And last Ooh, Heinrich. Name? Von Pyre. Heinrich von Pyre. Von mm. Pyre? Mm. Vampire? Von Pyre. Title? Uh, Count. Your name is Count, Count Heinrich, Heinrich von, von Pyre. Pyre. <laughs> yes. Hmm. I do trust him. I that believe that that actually is his name. It is? It is. I thank you, little girl. I happen to come from a long line of vampires. I have no doubt in my mind. I don't want to waste calling Malcolm because I don't think he'll give me the extra money anymore. Uh, I'm half tempted to let's do a truth spray on him. <laughs> Your tawdry magic Damn spray it. does not have any effect I didn't on see me, that in the child. book. Maybe I have something else that'll get you talking. I don't have any garlic. <gasps> oh. Maybe this will loosen your lips. Yeah, wasn't the vampires that have to count the a grains? Bag of rice. You're showing me a bag of rice? Why would you do such a thing? Would you happen to know how uh -huh. many grains of rice there are in that bag? I don't know. Maybe you should count a lot? Them. Holy crap! Okay, just give it to me. I will count them for you. A bag of rice. I never, in all my years. <laughs> okay, weirdo. Next. Oh, clicked it too soon. Maybe you didn't know it, but a vampire is cursed to count every grain of rice in a bag that is given to him. This kept him busy before daybreak. Good job. You got lucky with that one. Listen, little girl, there isn't much time. You must send me to jail immediately. I pray you don't make me explain any further. We He's have a werewolf. The time. He's got a moon on his belt. I have seen him before. Better hurry. I've seen you before. Let's go with better hurry. This guy doesn't seem interested in small talk. I better get on with the job. He's got a moon on his belt. I'm gonna guess he's a werewolf. Is there anything, in most cases, individuals remain blissfully unaware of their transformation, but in some cases they know and they desperately seek asylum to save their loved ones from the dark passenger. I wonder what happens if I talk to him. Maybe we should just jail him. I'm positive he's a werewolf. Let's just, we'll just put him in jail. That's what he wanted. I'm not gonna... He obviously knows, so... Oh no, he's gonna be in there with the goblins. <laughs> Thank you. Bless you, child. The world is a safer place now. I really hope you get the help you need. I mean, who asks to go into jail? So obviously that... Yeah. You observed and understood this man's affliction. Lycanthism. Uh, you made the right decision, and quickly. Yeah, see, I was worried if I talked to him, it might cause him to turn into a werewolf, so I'm glad I did not speak to him. Oh, that's oh my god. Dude. <laughs> no, no, little one. Not a god. Just an incredibly handsome mortal. People make that mistake all the time. It is I, Prince Phineas, heir to the throne of Petrarch. I bet he was with the Chancellor. I just, I have a feeling there's going to be end up something between them because they hate each other so much. Incredibly handsome, I know. Incredibly handsome? Really? <laughs> 11 out of 10, baby. <laughs> Barf. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, Do you told him that. To declare? Please say no and just go about your business. 
As a matter of fact, I do. Yeah, I was afraid of that. I declare that I am... <laughs> drunk. Go on. I don't think he's drunk. I think he's just been uh, having a little fun in the hay there. Go on. What? You kind of trailed off there? What? Maybe he's drunk. I declare that I am. And then... Uh, then what? Okay. And I feel like I'm gonna regret asking, but what have you been doing tonight? What do you want me to say? Milkmaids? Uh, or what I've been doing with the milkmaids? Aren't you wanting to get together with the princess and she's gone milking and you're like, milking? It's <laughs> missing? It's a milkmaid's man. It's, he was getting something milked. Uh, we've come this far, regret. Well, we've come this far. What have you been doing with the milkmaids? <laughs> I got thrown out for trying to stretch a single into a double. Gross. Sad. Gross. Aren't you here trying to win the hand of yeah, Princess exactly. Desdemona? Well, sure I am, but when the Mage's Guild throws a party in your honor, boy, do they know how to show you a good time. Why would there be milkmaids at the Mage's Guild party? And you can't stop a fox from stealing eggs, am I right? Huh? What? What? What does that even mean? It means everyone always thought the Sprawl was crazy for being aligned with such an uptight group of old boars. They really know how to show a guy a good time. No, I meant the thing about the foxes stealing eggs. Can't stop them, and I'm the fox. Barf, 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 barf. <laughs> good night, Prince Phineas. That's me. Ha, ha. Yeah, I know. That's why I said it. Now get out of here, you drunk fool! Oh, alright. <laughs> oh, he didn't even count. Good evening, my dear. This is Abernathy. You're out awful late, especially with all these comings and goings about the sprawl. Oh, my stars! Would you look at the time? How the day does get away from you. I best be turning in. Hmm. My dad will sure be glad I've seen at least one familiar face tonight. Your dad? Yeah, you know my dad, Hamish. Oh yes, Hamish. It's a changeling. Your dad, Hamish. Best be getting home to bed. That's funny. I don't think I've ever heard you call him Hamish before. Yes, usually I call him your dad. No, usually you call him Shamish. Yes, Shamish. Best be getting home to bed. What can I use to detect them easily? It might give me the bonus points. Susceptible to physical damage. Okay, truth spray doesn't work on them. Gonna use the bull whip. Ah! Oh my stars, would you look at the time? How the day does get away from you. I best be turning in. Yeah, that seems pretty off to me. Okay, let's go ahead and talk to her one more What's time. What's kept you out so late tonight? Well, with all these comings and goings about the sprawl, I've been out of sorts. My routine is all over the map these days. Best be getting home to bed. Mmm, doubtful. Even so, it's pretty late for you to be out. Was there something special happening tonight? Something special. Awkward pause. Well, with all these comings and goings about the sprawl, I've been out of sorts. My routine is all over the map these days. Best be getting home to bed. I wonder if turning her away is enough or if I'm supposed to put her in jail, but we'll just deny her. Yikes. It's a real face. I'm sorry, Mrs. A, but I don't think I can let you in. Oh, my stars, would you look at the time? 
how the day does get away from you. I best be turning in. <laughs> no, Mrs. Abernathy. You are not welcome here. Well, Ew. that's weird. Hmm. I almost... I missed, uh, whatever the word was. So something seemed off about Mrs. Abernathy Knight. Uh, like more than usual, you made the right call. Well, why didn't I get this stupid thing? I hit it with, the uh, the whip. I wonder what else I had to do. Necromancer. Well, well, well. If it isn't the little girl who works at the guard shed. I was hoping we'd meet again. Well, I'd love the guy from to stay the beginning. I have a rather important meeting to attend. That's the mage that we, um... Met the first time. What do we do with necromancers? Their weakness is their ego. I guess so we just keep talking to them. They'll gladly welcome a fallen wizard who has seen the error of their ways back into the fold. However, not one has yet to give up the dark arts once they've tasted that sweet, sweet necromancy. So he's probably not gonna. So, with his ego... I don't know if we would want to use that. I'm probably just talking to him. And what exactly is this meeting you're attending? If you must know, I was summoned by Creator Cargan personally. It is a highly confidential matter that doesn't concern you. As a guard of the kingdom, you don't tell me what does and does not concern me. I tell you what does and does not concern me. <laughs> Go, girl. A backbone. Interesting. Foolish, but interesting. Why does Praetor Cargan want to meet with you? Hmm. I'm feeling rather generous today, so I will tell you. The Marvog High Council, led by Praetor Cargan herself, are concerned. As ceremonial killings have become more and more common, their numbers continue to dwindle. With that in mind, the Empress reached out to me regarding the practice of necromancy to preserve the life force of some of these brave fallen souls. Necromancy is a dark art. Isn't that bringing dead people back to life? Oh, child, it is so <laughs> much more than that. With knowledge of life and death, the future and the past both fold atop one another, connecting us to all of time, and giving us the ability to foretell not only what has been, but what is to come. I don't know if I should maybe call Ash. I don't I don't think the truth serum would do anything. Yeah, there's nothing. Oh, that just takes you back to the book. Okay, I was just curious. I just have a cinnamon roll that doesn't do any good. Just talk to him again. I told you my business. I've played your game. Why do you continue to bar my access? Doing my job. You're evil. This necromancy stuff sounds pretty evil to me. That is exactly the reason we need to enshrine the magical freedoms of the Mages Guild. With small-minded smaggles like you trying to dictate what we can and cannot study. Yeah, I think we should deny him, but I'm wondering if we should jail him. I wonder what happens if we do. Because if we deny him, he might try to attack the city later on, so let's let's jail him and see what happens. You have no right to imprison me, no right to even stand in my view, you pathetic... Smaggle. <laughs> Smaggle. Is that like a muggle? Smaggle. Yes, that is the word we mages use to describe worthless, magicless beings such as you. You are a prime grade A example <laughs> of a smaggle. <laughs> Dude, that's pretty weak. No, it is not weak. It cuts to the core. Mm, not really. No, that's lame. Get out of here. The Praetor will know of your insolence, little one. Well, the Praetor doesn't run the kingdom. Oh, I only got one. Uh, he didn't really commit a crime, even though, let's face it, he probably would have. So I guess now you're just sending people to jail because you don't like them. A slippery slope. I guess we should have just denied him, but I was afraid he would, like, attack. Oh, what was that? Oh. 
Oh, it's an entity. I think my character just had a heart attack. Oh my god! Are you some kind of scary tree monster? <laughs> yes! Now let me in or I'll thwomp and stomp you! How dare you. Okay, so what do we do with these again? An entity. Fire woodcutter acts poorly administered town hall meetings. The bark of a forest entity is often the site of cryptic magic runes and prophetic writings that can be deciphered. Okay. I noticed you have something carved on your bark, but I can't quite make out what it says. Somebody carved it on me when I was a sapling. Oh. It was a mistake. Mind if I try to read it? Okay. <laughs> okay. It reads, to lodge all power in one party and keep it there is to ensure bad government and the sure and gradual deterioration of public morals. Does that mean anything to you? That was the words of person who came to Woods to write. I remember him, Mark Goblin Twain. He was inspiring to Scary Tree Monster. Talked about how to make change in world. And was it through stomping and thwomping? No, it wasn't. That was Scary Tree Monster's idea. He spoke of change through something called corrupt government systems. Maybe there's a better way to get people out of your woods. Maybe a more official way. Are you saying Scary Tree Monster it's should run effect. for government office to implement real systemic change? Yeah. Sure. Run for office. Why not? Mm. And what business would you say you have in the sprawl this evening? Too many people come through my woods. Too many strangers stomping on our roots and throwing their garbage on us. <laughs> Me and my brothers and sisters say no more. That must be really hard on you and the other... Scary tree monsters? Hmm. Not all are scary. Oh, why do you have to be scary? Can I admit the non-scary one? So if people coming through your woods is bugging all of your plant friends, why didn't they all show up? Why just send you? Plant friends got together and decided scary tree monsters should go. Scary tree monster was voted the scariest and strongest and can walk pretty well. So he was the one elected to stomp and thwomp. Seems like you have a pretty democratic way of figuring things out in the woods. Yes, but we must still be wary of the tyranny of the majority. Yeah, I can't, I can't touch any of the fire stuff. So, but we're gonna deny him. Because I don't think he should come in. It's gonna stomp and thromp everything. You know, I've got nothing but faith in your new political career, Scary Tree Monster, but I just don't feel comfortable letting you in. Not without you going back to the forest and talking to all your other tree and plant friends about this. You make a good point. I will go to my community and really listen to them, mm. then bring their needs forward to be heard. I look forward to earning your vote one day. That had to be- oh, come on. You planted a seed in the scary tree monster's mind, then cruelly denied him. Don't send him away just as he's waking up to civic responsibility. Well, I didn't- couldn't trust that he was not going to do anything. Hello. I wish safe passage through this gate. Can do. I'm just gonna need you to lift that hood. Gotta see if you're human or elf or gelatinous blob. <laughs> We've had all types tonight. I'm afraid I can't do that. I assure you, I am human. Now please allow me safe passage. Uh, 
It's gonna have to use the x-ray. It's probably like Medusa. Hmm. Some type of necklace? Whoa, what's with the neck candy? A little out of place for someone dressed so discreetly. My necklace is none of your concern. So you stole it? I did not steal it. Then it was a gift? Yes, from my mother. I wish I got a gift like that from my mom. Only thing I got from her was this hair. Mmm. <laughs> I don't know what it does. It's from her mom, I'll return it. You know, I could keep this in order to get you to tell me more about yourself, but I won't. Use the truth, Sarah. I greatly appreciate that. Greatly enough to tell me who you are? No. Aw, you're no fun. That emerald looked like the real thing. Maybe I should call one of the higher ups about it. Maybe Ash? I'm forwarding you to Mrs. Ash now. Please hold. Hold music. Lil, I've heard something about a necklace. Hello to you, too. Yes, the cloaked woman is rocking some serious neckwear. Silver chain, big green rock. That is the same necklace that the princess wears. Maybe the princess gave it to her as proof so that she could enter safely and relay mm. a message to me. Let her in immediately and tell Travis he's fired. Why? Oh, I tell him that every night. It's a little game. Ta! <laughs> I'm still on the call, you know. Hmm. I bet that's the princess. But let's go ahead and use some truth spray on her, see if that works. I am returning to the kingdom after being away by my own volition. I have to hurry. There is a deadline that must be met. I have to inform them of my choice. Ugh! Be gone, magic truth spray. Wow, yeah, that's the princess. you've got quite the resistance to that. Mind telling me how I could do that? Uh, it takes a strong-willed mind and a small knowledge of sorcery. How about a wandering brain and a great knowledge of rocks? Okay, we'll let her through because I'm pretty sure that's Princess Desdemona. Why? But something tells me I should let you enter. Maybe it's the necklace. Maybe it's the nothing else you've told me about yourself. But I gotta follow my gut on this one. Thank you. The choice you made here today will not go unrewarded. Tacos. No, money. We want money, not tacos. Make my reward tacos. Uh... I mean, tacos are good. Okay, sure. <laughs> Hooray! Maybe we should go with tacos instead of money. Seems this mysterious lady was hiding a royal surprise. Well deduced, guardsman, and there may be tacos in your future. Him again. All right, there. It is done. Oh, counted all. 16,451. I've counted every single grain of rice in this bag. I also counted 14 bugs, 27 bottle caps, and one mouse skull. And you said I couldn't do it. No, I didn't. Oh, well, I did it anyway. Now, where were we? Ah, yes, you were just about to invite me into the sprawl. No. I'm sorry, but it's almost sunrise, which means my shift is done. <laughs> You'll have to wait until the next guard comes on duty. It's almost sunrise? Oh, holy hell, I can't believe I spent another night wasted counting grains of rice. I'll come back tomorrow night. Why not just wait until the daytime guard comes? Because I can't. Mm -hmm. Why not? Vampire. Because I said I can't. I blister in the sun. I bet you do. So long, child. Until the next time when you are unfortunate enough to have to work the night shift. So long, obvious vampire dude. <laughs> Man, I was doing so well, and then I had those two 
two or three that I messed up on. Well, at least we're going to still keep our job. So due to your good job performance of a three, you were paid 20 gold for the shift. Okay, so we're going to head to the Twisted Sister Tavern. We'll just have to go straight on the next shift or something. Hmm. It's you! What are you doing here? Are you here to give me tacos? No. I've come to reveal my true identity to you. You're Desdemona. I already so, know. So, no tacos? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Desdemona. Mm. Princess Desdemona? Doesn't look anything like she did under ah, the hood. I knew it all along. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yes, I did. Why split hairs? But what about the kidnappers? There were no kidnappers. I disguised myself and ran away. I'm sorry for all the commotion I've caused. Okay. I had to get away to say goodbye to someone important to me before... My wedding. I don't understand. I'm being forced to marry one of the suitors from these two rival kingdoms. Yeah, yeah, that's old news. What I don't understand is why you, a princess, are here talking to me about it. Shouldn't there be more official people that could play therapist? <laughs> like Stryker? <laughs> Ash? Oh god. Oh, not Malcolm. I know my father had faith in them. When I'm gone, your advisors will help maintain the balance, blah, blah, blah. They want me out of the way so they can control my father's kingdom. Mm -hmm. They've never been good at listening to what I want or how I want to rule this land. Nobody listens to me. Sing it, sister. <laughs> and now I'm being forced to choose between allying the Sprawl with the kingdom of Petrard or the Marvog Empire. You mean Phineas the Pompous Prince or Cargan the Praetor Terror? And it doesn't even matter if I love them or not. At the end of the day, it's strictly politics. Lucky me. This is the first time in the game I've been okay being 12. <laughs> I just want to make the right choice. Tell me, Lil, what do you think of Prince Phineas? He's great. I have doubts. He's the worst. I mean, honestly, he's an arrogant douche nozzle, but I don't think he's really that bad. I think he'd be better than the Praetor, because I feel the Praetor is too warmongering with her people. But then I don't know if, like, if they were turned down, if they would start a war. I don't know. I'll just say he's great. He looks like a prince out of a storybook. What's not to love? Although he was milk and the milkmaid, and what about so... what Praetor Cargan? What do you think? She's too much. Like, I can't... I, I, she's the worst. Honestly, I think it's bull****. They talk about honor, but she's got a lot of blood on her hands. Mm -hmm. Hard pass for me. So if you were me, and you had the future well-being of the Sprawl in your hands, who would you choose? Oh god, don't ask me that. But I would go with Phineas because I feel Car uh, Cargan is too... too much with the murderousness, and I feel like that just is not going to be a good match. And it might get them in more trouble than what this idiot would, but... Thank you for your honesty. I know my advisors have jerked you around, but I also know you don't always do what they say, and I like that. <laughs> you remind me of, well... Me. <laughs> and you remind me of me, too. If I was rich and beautiful and influential. <laughs> oh, you are influential. You've changed the course of fate more than you know. Don't forget beautiful. I am also beautiful. <laughs> the sun's coming up. I must go. I shall put my own heart aside and do what's best for the kingdom. Can we get the achievement alliance chosen, Pritchard? You helped convince the princess to choose Phineas and ally with him. Okay, so Count Heinrich von Pyre, although clearly a vampire, Count Heinrich von Pyre was also a registered chiropractor with a private practice on the outskirts of the rapidly 
uh, gentrifying little ogre town and neighborhood. Being compelled to count every grain in the bag of rice you gave him made Heinrich lose a whole night's worth of business. These missed appointments led to a huge number of negative reviews for his practice, which caught the attention of local school teacher and leader of the Better Business Bureau, uh, Myrna Herkin. The next night, she led an angry mob brandishing pitchforks and torches to his practice's door. Maybe it was the light of the torches reflected in their eyes, but it took just one look from uh, Myrna and the Count to fall madly in love. Or was the fact that he was a powerful vampire one of those things? <laughs> the Count swooped down and lifted Myrna up out of the angry mob. He bit her at least three times and made her drink his own blood to, the, to facilitate her own vampiric transformation. She left her gig at the Better Business Bureau, and the Count welcomed his new soon-to-be bride into his castle. Now, along with dealing with that pesky Van Helsing fellow who kept trying to kill him, Heinrich also had a wedding to plan. <laughs> okay, so the werewolf. Uh, the afflicted man was safe from the transformation rays of the full moon, and even should he have transformed, the thick iron bars would have protected everyone. Although the good people of the sprawl were safe from the wrath of his curse, the mourner was not spared the aggression of his fellow inmates. Con cornering him in the cell, they shanked him with a <laughs> handmade shiv, leaving him there to bleed to death. Luckily, the shiv was wilted out, wilt wilted, whittled out of a silver spoon, miraculously curing him once and for all of the curse of the beast that attacked him so long ago. After a fortnight of recovery in the prison's infirmary, the mourner was released back into society. Unfortunately, on his journey back to Scarborough in the Shire of uh, Besseronia, Besseronian, the mourner was attacked by a different werewolf and suddenly his curse to Ken. Seems that if it wasn't for bad luck, this guy would have no luck at all. Uh, Crown Prince of Pritchard, Fernius Pomp, stumbled back to his lavish lodgings at the palace. Hungry and drunk, he lit the fire and put a pot of stew before passing out on the floor. He awoke the next morning having no memory of how he got home or why his room reeked of burnt stroganoff. But he did remember the rager of a party thrown in his honor by the Mages Guild and the promise he made to them should he be chosen to marry Princess Desdemona. Mm -mm, that's not good. Okay, this Mrs. Abernathy was no Abernathy at all. In reality, it was a horrible, shape-shifting monster. Running off into the night, the creature assumed a different identity and gained entry into the sprawl at another gate. Great. Once inside the sprawl, it, well, we lost track of it, having the ability to take the form of anyone who made it difficult to track so its whereabouts remain unknown. It was reported later that night that an unusually untalkative guardsman, Cecile, was trying to break its way into the Sprawl's armory. Being denied entry, guardsman Cecile apparently screamed in a high-pitched voice and ran off into the night. Be on the lookout for this creature. Could be anyone. Mm, so it could come back. Okay, Tyronius uh, Athreos. Tyronius Athreos was only slightly delayed meeting with Praetor Cragen, with promises of resurrecting a prison guard's to deceased pet budgie Petey. He was snuck out of the prison and free to gain audience with the Margavian ruler. Upon meeting with Cargan and her attendants, he divulged some of the secrets of necromancy. This forged a bond between the Margave Empire and the Mages Guild in exchange for a number of Rise the Dead spells, as well as a commitment for additional ongoing services. The Margrave Empire vowed to align the Guild's interests with their own if the Praetor is chosen for marriage by Princess Desdemona. So the Guild worked in favor of both of them. So if Desdemona picks, uh, the dude, was it Phineas? He's going to do what the guild wants. And if she picks the, the praetor, she's going to do what the guild wants. So, Okay, Scary Tree Monster. With dreams of holding political office now planted in the Scary Tree Monster's head, he stomped his way back to the woods and got to work. He became involved in green initiatives such as reintroducing biodiversity to reverse the effects of soil erosion, as well as standing in order to thwomp people to death for littering uh, water bottles on the forest floor. He soon earned a strong reputation for being a guy who could make change happen, as well as dual, dual out brutal punishment. Gathering the needed signatures for political office application was going to be a breeze for Scary Tree Monster. Now all he needed to do was obtain and fill out a required paperwork for the city's clerk office in the sprawl, which was easier said than done, as Scary Tree Monster didn't know how to read or write. <laughs> Princess Desdemona. When Princess Desdemona returned to the castle, she refused to answer any questions regarding her whereabouts. She immediately issued a royal decree to cut funding to any active rescue missions and to put an end to the um, antiquated practice of choosing rescuers via flashy game shows. As she lay in bed that night, she reflected on the little guardsman's advice. She knew that her decision would inadvertently alter the fate of the sprawl and the fate of every soul who called it home. She was probably out visiting somebody that she was actually really in love with. 
Okay, the night shift was the achievement. Completed level five, so we are on level six. And although the princess has come home, she is still remaining quiet on where she was during her missing time, but frankly, I do not care. She's got that look at me, I'm back attitude, and it reflects in her style. <laughs> you know it. She was seen returning to the castle, rocking those possibly with kidnapped leggings, all while sporting a I might have just run away and ran out of money <laughs> hooded cloak. What do you think she's going to be wearing at the wedding? No idea, but no doubt it will complement her chosen spouse's home kingdom. That's right. Princess Desdemona has finally made her choice, and it's Prince Phineas Pomp of the Kingdom of Petrard. I knew it was going to be them. <laughs> it was the obvious choice from the get-go. So obviously obvious. So, so long, Praetor Cargan of the Marvog Empire, you just didn't make the cut. <laughs> bye. Bye-bye. Mm, <laughs> See ya, wouldn't want to be ya. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> mm, See ya, wouldn't want to be ya. They're just going to keep repeating bye. it. Bye. Oh, God. Please turn off. So, she made her choice. Her life is filled with intrigue, and I feel like I am now somehow intertwined with her fate's path. Oh well, off to go see what the gang's up to. All right, everyone. So that was uh, chapter five or level five, whichever one you want to call it, of Little Guardsmen. Um, I I definitely love this game. I love having to pick uh, who I can let in and who I shouldn't. Um, I wish I was a little bit better at figuring out what I needed to use uh, to solve it. Like um, you know, with the the scary tree entity. Um. I was like missing what uh, I got two stars on that one, and I followed what it said. It was the same thing with the uh, the uh, shapeshifter. I whacked it with the the uh, the whip, so you think that would have got gotten me the um, you know the full the full count for it, but it did not. Uh, please leave me a comment down below. Leave me a like. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you next time. Bye.